Hi everybody, Gemma here. I miss you all so much. Let's do some yoga together. I'm starting in a cross-legged seat, but you can start in any comfortable seat that is accessible for your body. You can put a block under you or a folded up blanket, anything that helps you access your comfortable meditative seat. And once you find that, See if you can find each of your sits bones underneath your body. Press them down into the earth and lift up through the crown of your head. Settle and let your shoulders drop away from your ears. Relax your jaw, your neck, and your scalp. Start to observe your breath, first noticing what it's doing without controlling it. And after a few rounds of observant, voluntary breath, start to set your intention. Hands can be palms up or down. You can dangle your arms by your sides if you want. Keep listening to your breath. Keep observing your physical body as your breath moves in and out of it. Start to deepen your breath slowly at your own pace. And when you're ready, on a slow, deep breath in, press down through the left palm into the mat beside you and lengthen and lift up and over through your right arm. Let your right hip bone press down into the earth and lengthen the distance between your hip and your armpit. You can look up and then down. Frame your face with your bicep and when you're ready on an exhale, you can release that back down and settle back in the center. And then on a slow, deep breath in, press down through your right hand and lift up and over through your left side body. Your neck can follow you. You can look up or down. Take a long, deep breath in, pressing down through the left hip, lifting up through the left shoulder. And then when you're ready to release on an exhale, you can drop that back down. Come to the center and placing the hands on the knees, take a long, slow breath in and out, rolling on the sits bones forward and back through a seated cat-cow. So curling the tailbone back and up behind you, lift the heart and open the belly forward, maybe lifting the chin and then exhale to round deeply the other direction, curling forward and back. And then whenever you're ready, we're going to add a little bit of arms to this, opening and closing, sweeping the arms back behind you as you open your chest and forward as you exhale. We're going to take the cat cow onto the knees next. So coming to all fours, plain old dog pose, Svanasana, put your knees under your hips, your palms under your shoulders, and take that cat cow here, breathing in to find cow pose, opening your belly toward the mat, flipping your tailbone up and heart forward, and then exhaling to press the mat away, lift your heart up through your shoulder blades behind you. And then... Breathing in, extend one leg behind you. Curl your right toes under and lengthen that leg. Reach back with the heel and extend through the Achilles tendon and calf. Take a few breaths to stay and then rotating the left foot off of the mat, roll on to the inner edge of your right foot. Extend a side plank here. So keep that left knee underneath you. Use it as a kickstand, or you can extend to full side plank if that's your practice. Remember that you can take arm overhead or extend the leg up if you want, reaching through the heel. And then take one more deep breath through that side body. And then exhale to rotate back down whenever you're ready. Maybe come back to a few rounds of cat-cow to rinse out the spine when you're in your, down, your dog pose. And then we'll take the other side. 
So curl the left toes as you reach back with that leg. Extend through the heel, the calf, and then rotating slowly on the right knee, take the right foot off the mat and extend to your side stretch here. Vashisthasana, side plank. Arm can go overhead if you want, leg can extend. Just lengthening the left side body, breathing into the left lung. Your fullest breath in will be your fullest expression of the pose in your body and then you'll exhale to rotate back and maybe rinse some things out with a cat cow. And then we're going to take our time rolling onto the balls of our feet, maybe bringing a block with us or whatever we're using as a block. Now you do not have to melt all the way down onto the heels. If you're up on your toes, that's perfectly fine. And if you have any discomfort in this pose at all, remember that you can put a block under you, take the feet away, open up that angle in the knees a little bit. Listen to the unique anatomy of your own physical body here and find Malasana, deep Buddha squat. You can rest your elbows on your knees if you want. Let your arms hang like empty sleeves. You could press your palms together at the heart, pressing the inner knees apart gently with the elbows. Lengthen your spine, let the shoulders drop down, and take a few moments here. And then we'll take a gentle twist in our molasana bringing our palms down to the mat, put the left palm in front of your toes and put that left bicep inside the left knee. And then as you breathe in, extend that right arm up and back as you exhale deeply, twist your torso. You can tuck the top arm back behind you if you want, binds if they're accessible, you can take them, listening to what your physical body is asking for today. Right lung spins up and back into the sky. Left lung spins over to the left. When you're ready on a deep exhale, rotate back to the front and just curl forward, dropping your head down. Curling into a ball, take a few moments here. Maybe seeing if today the forearms can meet the mat, spreading the fingers maybe thinking of a baby crow in the future. And then we'll take the twist to the other side, pressing the right bicep into the right inner knee. Breathe in and lift that left lung up and back. The right lung spins to the left and the left lung opens up and back behind you. Extend through the arm or find that deep bind to assist you twisting and take your fullest expression breath in and then when you exhale that breath release and curl forward into that same ball letting your head drop if you would like there's a chance for a nice teeny forearm balance here called baby crow so if you're familiar with crow it's basically a forearm version of that you'll press your forearms into the mat hitch your hips up knees into the armpits or onto the upper arm bone and then shifting weight forward you can see if you feel safe enough to lift a toe or two maybe one at a time pressing the mat away hover for a few moments safely put yourself back down just see what's accessible and possible today and then we're going to come onto the knees remember to pad your mat if you have tender joints so that we can take camel ustrasana. Make sure your hips are right above your knees. Make sure that there's knees pressing into the mat so that you can open your front hip points. A block between the ankles behind you with curled toes can really help here. Press down to lift up. And then we're gonna take our palms one at a time onto our sacrum. Finger points pressing up, palms pressing into the sacrum to support it. Take a long, slow breath in. 
And as you exhale, start to open the chest up and back, letting the belly open, pressing forward into the pelvis with those palms. Now, if you have a lot of practice in this pose, you might choose to place your hands on your heels and use that as leverage to open the heart even further. Remember, you can look right above you, you can look right in front of you, or you can tilt your head all the way up and back. When you're ready to come out, place your palms back on your sacrum. And then as you exhale, we'll sink down and find a child's pose. So after that really deep heart opener, let's open up the back body a little bit. Let the open low back breathe, hands behind you. You can remain there or we're going to roll into rabbit. So if this is a nice pose for you, roll onto the crown of your head and press down as hard as you can through the back of those hands. Let the shoulders roll away from the ears and feel the whole spine curling open. Tuck the tailbone with the hips right above you. And when you're ready to exhale, roll back down. And then we'll breathe in, press up curling toes to our knees. And then we'll breathe out to place the palms and roll back to camel. Take a long, slow, full breath in here. And then when you exhale, We'll slowly release, pressing forward into our palms and melt down. Come to Balasana, child's pose, dropping your forehead and then roll onto the crown of your head for rabbit pose, Shashangasana. Press down through the crown of your head and the back of the hands into the mat and then exhale to roll back down. Breathe in, curl the toes, and press up to the knees, and breathe out, slowly find camel, pressing into the pelvis, roll the heart open. Long, slow breath there. And then we'll exhale, and slowly come back down to child's pose. Press down into the back of the hands, roll forward onto the crown. Last full breath in rabbit, and then exhale and roll back down onto your seat. You can take as many rounds of those flows as you like, maybe pausing the video to take more than I've offered. And then we're going to come back to all fours and take a long, slow breath in, maybe rinse the spine out with a little cat cow for our own breath pace. And then coming to a neutral spine, we're going to breathe in and drag the right knee forward between the wrists. Breathe out and start to slide the left leg back for half pigeon. Now, it doesn't matter if there's any distance between you and the mat. Any distance between that right hip and the floor should be filled up with either a block, folded up towel, rolled up blanket. If there's just a little space between you and the mat, you can use a sandbag like I've chosen, a little bag of rice or beans, whatever you have in your pantry, and then make sure that your hips are level. Try not to roll outward onto the right hip. Try to keep the pelvis level and make sure the back leg behind you is straight, toe pointing right behind you. Try to curl your tailbone down towards the earth and pressing into the mat or your right leg or a block, lift up for a tall chest. You can stay upright as long as you need to in this pose, keeping your spine perpendicular to the floor. And then when you're ready to melt forward and down and bring your spine more parallel to the earth, you can use elbows, palms, forearms, 
and you can prop yourself up on anything you need to. Take your time with this pose and breathe slowly and deeply at your own pace. Remember to pause the video if there are any poses you need to hold for longer than I'm holding them. Listen to the sensations coming from your physical body here. Breathe deeply through any tensions. When you're ready to come out of this pose, we'll bring our palms to the mat and curl our back toes under so that we can lift onto that left knee and pull the right knee back. And when you come back to dog pose, maybe a few rounds of cat-cow, and then we'll draw the left knee forward for half pigeon on this side, pulling the knee up between the wrists. I'm taking my left foot off in front of my right hip. And then I'll uncurl my right toes, slide that right leg back behind me, put anything in between that mat and my hip if there's any space there to fill up. And then I'll press down to lift up, finding a perpendicular to the floor spine, curling the tailbone as much as I can toward the earth. I'm gonna lift up through the crown, drop down through the shoulders. If you're preparing for a pose like mermaid with that bent knee behind you here, stay upright for a long time. Coming forward and down whenever you're ready. Take your time to find peace in this pose. Maybe your breath is fast here, maybe it's slow. Maybe you can feel it in your back, your belly, your chest. Maybe you can feel something in your hips here. Listen to your body and when you're ready, we'll press down, we'll curl our rear toes under and come back to down a dog pose. It looks like I've swung my leg around here. So if that's your option to come onto the seat, we're going to come on to our two rear sits bones. Place your palms on the mat and start to do just a little tenderizing rock side to side. Lean back as much as you want to here and start to find some myofascial tension release. Massage into the soft tissues of your back body here using your bones and the floor to find any trigger points, any knots. Roll onto those areas and work through them a little bit. Take as much time as you need to do this. And then when you're ready, we'll come onto our sits bones and pull the soles of the feet together for Baddha Konasana. The feet don't have to be as close to the groins as you can get them. The knees don't have to be touching the floor. Breathe here, lifting up through the crown of your head. Relaxing the jaw, relaxing your scalp. We're going to prepare ourselves to roll this pose down and back onto the floor. Now remember the soles of the feet don't have to be as close to your body as they can be. The distance from your pelvis to your feet is up to you here. You can use props. I've chosen to prop up my head here. You can use a weight on any joints that feel um, loose or tight, uncomfortable. You can use a sandbag or any kind of a weight on your eyes or face. If it's uncomfortable to have the knees floating in space, you could put a block underneath the outside of each knee. And once you come into stillness here with hands either resting on the body or out away from the body, let your breath go. 
See if you can find stillness and peace in this pose, letting your belly inflate as much as it needs to with every breath in and out. When you're ready to bring your knees together to touch, we're gonna walk the soles of the feet out to the edges of the mat and find that inner rotation for our hip bones. The soles of the feet can be as close to or as far away from your body as you'd like here, but walking them out to the edges of the mat, press your knees together. And if you want, you can stay there or find a little rotation side to side getting one knee out of the way while you rotate the inner knee down towards the mat. You can take this slowly side to side, reaching away from you with that outer knee while you get the other one out of the way. You can spend some time on each side or you can move along with your own breath, one breath per movement. When you're ready to come out of that, find your block and press down through the soles of the feet right underneath the knees so that we can lift the pelvis and slide the block underneath. And making sure your entire pelvis feels supported by this block. When you're ready, you'll lengthen both legs up into the sky and maybe curl the toes when you get there, rotate the ankles, you can point the toes, then the heels, then the balls of the feet. I like to check out here, making this a very restorative pose, resting hands on the body. If you want to ground and self heal, placing arms away from the body. If you want to open into vulnerability, tuck your chin a little bit here. So the cervical, the neck spine is really nice and long and allow yourself to find stillness. Breathing slowly and deeply at your own pace. Remember this pose can be done up against the wall. You can find a lot of leg variations to make this uniquely yours. Make sure that when you feel you need to come down out of this half inversion, you bend your knees and put the soles of the feet down. Stay up as long as you want to, pausing the video maybe. And then we're going to take a little gentle open hip here by walking the legs out. They don't have to be completely straight if that's uncomfortable for the knees. The soles of the feet can still touch the floor if lengthening all the way out is uncomfortable. Any distance between the heels here, just relax, opening across the front hips, the abdomen. Palms can be up, hands can rest on the body, and then we'll slowly walk the soles of the feet back onto the mat, bending the knees so that we can press down through the feet, lift the hips and take the block out and take a moment to settle. Let all four corners of your back body stretch out onto the mat with the soles of the feet resting for just a moment, bent knees. And then we're gonna come into a nice spinal twist to help prepare us for our final relaxation. So whenever you're ready, we're going to take a long, slow, deep breath in to open the arms out to a T, maybe reaching up into the sky first, wrists and palms up, and then crossing the right ankle onto the left thigh or knee or draping the right knee over the left for a deeper twist. We're gonna melt the hips over to the left and look over to the right, chin to the right shoulder. 
for a nice supine spinal twist. Your foot will land on the floor if you crossed ankle over knee. If you have that deeper eagle twist in your legs, your inner right knee will come toward the floor here. Breathe deeply and slowly into this twist, testing out the new shape of your torso with your lungs, pressing up against the inside of your ribs. Let go of voluntary control of your breath here. And when you're ready to come back to center, do it on your slow breath out. You can unbind the legs and recenter yourself on the mat with feet right underneath you. And then we'll take it to the other side, ankle on the right knee or cross the left knee over the right knee. And then take your twist over to the right letting your foot land or the inner left knee. If you want, you can place a block underneath the knees so that they don't have to make it all the way to the floor. Make sure that you make these poses accessible to you first. Your chin can be right over your heart or it can look over to the left shoulder here. Let gravity assist you a lot in this pose. When you're ready to roll back, make sure all four corners of your back body are spread out. Unbind your legs and put the soles of the feet down for a moment. Resettle yourself and then curl into a tiny ball, reaching for the shins or the feet. Take a Deep, slow breath in and pull your legs back as hard as you can with your arms as you press away with your legs as much as you can, making this tiny ball of energy that whenever you're ready to can burst open into your final relaxation pose. Now remember that Shavasana corpse pose is only one pose in which you can invite your physical body to get complete rest. So Remember, there, if there's another pose that you prefer, you can take that one. Coming into corpse pose, let any distance come between your two feet. Long, straight, heavy legs. Big toes kick away from each other. No need to keep those feet perpendicular to the floor. Arms away from the body, palms and wrists up. Let the belly inflate as much as it needs to with every breath. Relax every muscle of your face, your scalp, and your neck. And invite your physical body to get corpse level rest. Drifting Gently away from the physical body that you've left on your mat. Remind yourself that you are not merely this armature of skin and bones that's resting on your mat right now. Remember that it's important to give this physical body rest as well as the body that powers it around. Let your light, chronic breath body drift while your heavy physical body roots and grounds into the earth. You might enjoy during your final relaxation music or gentle drumming Remember to pause this and take your final relaxation as long as you need to, but when you're ready to slowly invite your conscious body back into your physical one, start to deepen your breaths. Start to engage with your physical body. Take a long, deep breath in to yawn, stretch, and roll onto your side as you breathe out. When you're ready to come up to any comfortable seat, 
and rejoin the rest of your world mindfully bring your palms in front of your heart from there we can lift them to our forehead symbolically connecting our heart and mind and we'll honor each other and our practice with a bow and a namaste i can't wait to see you all soon be blessed be well i love you <laughs>